Awesome. So welcome. Thank you for the animal inspiration. If anyone else wants to share in the chat an animal that inspired you this week, you are welcome to. We've got jaguar, spider, and fox so far. Lots of spiders. <laughs> and let's take a moment to let our eyes lower, coming together. Imagining that we are in the same room together, that we're able to be in the same space, sitting in a circle. And taking a moment to notice your breath and inviting your breath to become a little bit slower and a little bit deeper. And from this place, beginning to bring awareness toward the heart. Breathing slowly and deeply into the space of the heart. Taking a couple of breaths here in this way. And taking a moment to see if there's someone or something in your life that you can begin to activate some feeling of appreciation, care, or gratitude for. Inviting coherence in the heart by welcoming in your body to feel the feeling of care or gratitude or simply just inviting in a feeling of ease or calm right now into the space of your heart. Taking a couple more breaths here. In this way, inviting awareness at the heart and the feeling in the body of gratitude, peace or calm, care for someone or something. And from this place, seeing if there's any movement that would feel nourishing for your body, any ways that your body would like to stretch or twist. Still connecting with that image of all of us being able to be in the same room together, the field of our hearts in the same space. Mm 
And only when you feel ready, allowing eyes to open once again. All right, thank you everyone. And again, welcome, grand rising. Great to see you all. And holding in our hearts, the folks who aren't able to be here today, I heard from a couple people that they had some other things going on, but they'll be back next week. So bringing them in energetically to the space. And I want to give a warm and super grateful welcome to my dear sister, Janine Wand. Um, she is a powerful, intuitive healer, priestess, goddess inspiration. She works deeply with the divine feminine, with um, the, the ancient mother goddesses, and really supporting people coming into connection with the sacred. And um, I had the, the great mm, gift of working with her a bit last year during a really challenging time in my life and um, super, super supportive, super healing. And I, um, I asked Janine uh, to be a part of, uh, of being a guest for RISE, gosh, a couple months ago, and um, just kind of recognizing the divine timing, the way that spirit flowed us to be getting to have you on today in the midst of what's been unfolding in the country and in the world with Black Lives Matter. I want to welcome your ancestors in and all of you here. And, um, and so some of the mm, kind of mm, topics that we've been talking about here in the space, I felt Janine in on. And um, without, without anything else, thank you, thank you for being here. And I'll let you guide us as as I know you've been in spirit where to morning to all of you all I don't everyone's in different spots of the sorry there's the delay on my side go ahead it's all you <laughs> it's probably fine um yeah you you seem to be a little bit delayed and am I okay for everyone else okay good awesome uh, so um, just it's giving you greetings this morning. Thank you for um, for allowing me to be with you today um, and really hold space with you and to just give you um, Just to be with you from a heart space this morning Aria kind of opening with that That's really what I've been led to speak with you about and to um, offer you this morning to really just offer you my heart and offer you a place and a way to open up to a different or deeper level in your own heart. I know that for the last several weeks, you all have been having amazing speakers and teachings around um, uh, the Black Lives Matter and really diving into your own hearts about where you sit in this life with your own privilege and where you sit with how you choose to go forward, um, how you choose to look at the world, maybe to see it a little bit differently than what you've seen it in the past. And what keeps being unfolded for me when I was asking about what to say today, what to do, what should I offer, was offering heart space. There is something incredible about our hearts. Our hearts become these either walls that are made of bricks or they become sponges that absorb everything around them. I think that at times we are doing both. Sometimes we have that brick wall up and sometimes we're sponges or absorbing everyone else's energy, everyone else's opinions, everyone else's thoughts. What I have found with my work is that most of our stuff where we close off heart space or open heart space to usually occurs sometime before the age of five. And then we have another little spot where it seems to open a little bit more around age 15 where those things can impact our lives and the choices that we make and in how we receive others in our heart or how we are willing to open it or at times not willing to open. 
And so I want to really focus on that a little bit this morning, asking you for a few moments of time, again, to tune into your heart. I don't want your eyes closed or anything yet, but tune into your heart space. A couple breaths. What, is it, what does it feel like right now in this moment? As we are living in this world that really is requiring duality, what does that look like for you? We have this crisis, this pandemic going on, and we are told to mask, to cover, to stay out of everyone's way, to be in our homes, to shelter in place. And at the same time, we have this other thing happening where we need to unmask, or we need to open heart space, or we need to invite in others into our home, where we need to transform and transcend some of our thinking. So in your heart today, where are those places that even during the times over the last few weeks where you've had an opportunity to learn, to hear, to see differently? Are there places where maybe it got a little too scary? How am I supposed to do this work? I, I live in this area. I've only seen this number of people. Or I have tons of friends of color. I've got tons of black friends. Or I have one. I don't think I'm this or I don't think I'm that. Where is it in your own heart that maybe it could open more? That there's a possibility of seeing a different realm? Or maybe you found that through all of this, through each thing that seems like a crisis or case, that you opened so much that now your heart wants to shrink back and it's not wanting to open more, that maybe a few cobwebs in the last week or so have gotten in there. So for this moment, I'd like you to focus in on some of those things. The places where maybe there's some healing needed for your heart, for the work it has taken on, and to allow it some rest. Or maybe where there's a new opening needed. So I'd like to invite you right now with some breaths into a space of your heart, seeing what that might look like for you. And then allowing you time and a moment to close your eyes if you'd like. And taking some nice gentle breaths in through your nose and releasing them through your mouth. Allowing for even maybe a little movement of your hips and your spine. And as you find that your hips and your spine kind of that lower part of the body, lower part of the back, down at the bottom of the spine and the pelvic region, as you allow that to move a little bit, just some swaying to begin, allowing as the movement of the hips and the spine, kind of feeling as if you are just a little tree, just a tiny new growth of a tree that's able to bend and sway a bit with the wind. As you allow for that lower part of the back of the body to just sway a little bit right where you're at. I'd like you to begin to see yourself Picture yourself without pressure, but if you can find yourself in there as your five-year-old self. Just allowing yourself to be the freedom that a five-year-old would bring to the table. And if you find yourself at five and there's heartbreak at five, I ask you right now to just call a beautiful light around it. We're going to call in a rose quartz color, the color of rose around the heart. If you find that at five, there's some heartache there. And even if there is, 
allow for the place to return of the simplicity of being five. The things that you might have liked to do from drawing with paints or chalk to simply the ability to be loud and no one really saying too much about the loudness of the five-year-old. The gentleness of being able to play on a playground. Sandboxes. Finding things in life like the best rock ever in the rock pile on the sidewalk. Finding that at age five, simple things like suddenly hearing that little bell that may have been the call of the local ice cream truck. Simple things like swimming in the local pool or being able to go to the lake or beach. Find the softness and gentleness of the heart at five. There is something about that age where we began to form how we will go about the world, what we really think of the world. It's also amazing because the slightest little change in something, things that people think nothing about, maybe the way someone raised their voice just a little bit when you ask, could you have another glass of water? Maybe the some way, the way someone know, knew that you needed to tie your shoe, but they didn't quite bring the gentleness that you needed. Five is an amazing age because we form so much of our opinions during or before that time. So right now, as you get in touch with the beauty of the five-year-old, where does your heart sit? Where is he or she or they feeling like they are during this particular time? If you could invite yourself, the age that you are right now, to find a quiet space to sit with the five-year-old, to sit with yourself. Maybe it's on grandmother's porch. Maybe you find yourself right now sitting at the ocean on the beach with your five-year-old self. Wherever that is, wherever the comfort spot is for you at the age that you are now, to sit with the five-year-old self, I invite you to do that for a few moments. And while you find your way to this beautiful, comfortable place to sit with your five-year-old self, I ask you to take a few gentle breaths in, just breathing them in again through the nose and then out through the mouth. As you find your way again to this space, you at the age that you are now and your five-year-old self, I'd like you to sit right next to this person, this being that is you. And I'd like you to offer a hand on the shoulder or the knee or holding a hand or perhaps nothing at all. Maybe just sitting close enough to your five-year-old self so that you feel the love, the connection to your own heart. And again, reminding yourself to take a few deep breaths in, being gentle with yourself and gentle with your heart. As you find yourself now sitting and opening to the five-year-old self, again, with a couple gentle breaths in, I'd like you to look directly into the eyes of the five-year-old self from the age that you are now. 
An affair is one thing, perhaps two, that the five-year-old self could say to you now that it needed or wanted or desired, or perhaps just a beautiful, happy thought. Allow that to happen. Understanding and knowing that we live on continuously. So connecting deeply with that self. And really listening in from a place of the heart to what it is that five-year-old would like to tell you at the age you are now. Really feeling in. Allowing for the voice of your five-year-old, the voice of you to speak to you that you are now. If there is any misunderstandings, If there's a joy, allow your five-year-old self to share. Perhaps there was a small miscommunication between yourself and a parent or a trusted guardian. that the five-year-old wants to tell you about. Allow that. Again, reminding you to take some breaths. Deep but gentle breaths so that the heart is allowed to really flow as it chooses today. And as the five-year-old self begins to wrap up what he, she, or they needed to tell you, I'd like you to, again, if you aren't already doing so, to offer a hand, whether it's holding it over the shoulder, maybe even touching your own heart. I'd like you, from the age that you are now, to offer the five-year-old self some words of advice or inspiration or simply tell your five-year-old self how amazing you are, how amazing they are, and look how far you get to go and how far you've come. Whatever feels really good to that five-year-old self to hear, I invite you to tell that to the five-year-old self. Remembering to connect to the heart, to your heart, to their heart. And as you wrap up these words that you have, these words of wisdom, of delight, of sharing, of how far you've come in your life with your five-year-old self. I'd like you to reach into your pocket or a bag or perhaps a magical place within the realm that you're in 
where there is a hidden present, a hidden gift. That would be something that you leave with your five-year-old self. Perhaps if you're buried right in the sand and you know the exact location. Perhaps it's under a tree or buried deep in the meadow or in a sandbox. Wherever that gift is, is right now, I'd like you to take a hold of the gift. This is something that you know that your five-year-old self wanted or needs or will be delighted in having. As you hold this beautiful gift, this gift that you were offering to yourself, to the five-year-old. I'd like you to take the gift in your hand, whether holding it in two hands or one hand, maybe even covering it a bit, however feels good to you. I'd like you to take it, hold it in your hand, feel the warmth and beauty of the gift, Taking a few good deep breaths in for me through the nose and then releasing through the mouth. And doing that again, still while holding this gift that you have for your five-year-old, breathing in deeply through the nose and then out through the mouth. Holding this gift, feeling the warmth of it. And now I'd like you to take a really good deep breath in while you're holding this gift. And on the count of three, I would like you to hand the gift to the five-year-old. Again, a deep breath in for me. One, two, three. Hand the gift to the five-year-old and see what the gift is that you've offered your five-year-old self. And remembering a good gentle breath, connect with how your five-year-old is feeling with this gift that you have just offered him or her for the day. Being able to offer yourself the exact gifts that you are needing in this life. And taking another good deep breath in. This gift represents the fact that you were never really gone from the five-year-old. I'd like you to remind your five-year-old self that they are really with you in heart and in space at all times. And who they are is very important. And even though you're going to close off this time with them for this moment, that you are always there. That any time they are needing a hug or gift or connection, that they're welcome in your world now. And any time you are needing to find the five-year-old self to open up different heart space, that you are able to go back there. So right now, as you begin to step away from the five-year-old self, I'd like you to do so in a way that feels best for you. Again, whether it is by a hug or holding hands, whatever it feels like for you. Let your five-year-old self know that you aren't ever really gone. And if it feels right, tell them to come along and join you right now on the timeline. But something that says, I'm here, we are connected. Your thoughts are important. What you felt was important. What I felt was important.
And as you bring yourself away from the awareness of the spot that you were sitting in with a five-year-old, I'd ask you again to allow some movements in your hips, in the lower part of your body, and even in your neck and shoulders. Remembering that you are always connected to the heart of that five-year-old. And then as you find yourself moving a little bit further away from the heart of the five-year-old, just for this moment, you realize that suddenly you're not quite done. Yes, the five-year-old self is still there. But there is an older version of you that it has some words of divine wisdom for you right now. This older version is approximately 20 years older than where you are right now. So that older version of self, whether it be 45, 65, 73, whatever that is, 20 years from where you are right now. That older self suddenly appears in front of your feet. It's a bit startling to see yourself 20 years from now. You kind of greet the older self with, whoa, you're here with me now. The beauty of meeting the older self is that they offer us divine wisdom. And taking some good breaths in for me. They offer us ways that we can see ourselves, see our heart differently than perhaps we can see it where we are now. There's wisdom in the older self. This isn't going to be a very long talk. However, it is deep and heartfelt. And as this older self that is approximately 20 years older than you are now has suddenly appeared on your path as you were departing from your five-year-old self, this older self has some words of wisdom for you. And again, taking a breath in for me. Allowing for the words of wisdom to come. Another good deep breath in. And as you release that breath, What are the words of wisdom that your older self has to share with you right now? Really hearing it, taking it into the heart. What they have to say. This is a delightful meeting. Your response is joyful, like, wow, I'm so glad I met you right now. This person that is just your older self, but offers beautiful divine wisdom. As the words finish up in their flow, I'd like you to thank your older self whether it's with a high five, a hug, a dance together, but something to say, wow, thank you. I'm amazing and you're amazing for the wisdom they have offered you in this moment.
And as you again find your way back on your path, allowing the older self to step away, knowing that at any moment in time, similar to the five-year-old self, that when you are needing advice or wisdom or your day seems to be full of yuck or discouragement, that you can travel out to the older self and ask what's happening. Do you have anything for me? What can you tell me? So as you bring yourself again back on the path, finding your way, back into your body, back into the self that you are now, back into the beauty of this life, into the center of your own heart, your own being. Allowing your heart to receive everything that it needs in this moment. I'd like you again to tune into the lower part of your body, to tune into the spine movement, moving. And to remembering the beauty of who you are at all times in your life. The willingness to learn, to feel the duality of all the different worlds that are unfolding the possibility of shifting dynamics, shifting heart space. Feel deep into your own body right now. If your legs are crossed, allowing them to unfold or to move a bit, shaking your feet out, and shaking your arms out and your neck, loosening it up some, but allowing yourself to come fully back into the body. And again, some deep breaths, breathing them into heart space as best you can. And if it feels right for you in this moment, if you want to stand up for me just for a second, or however long it feels good, I want you to move your body some and kind of ground in a different energy. For every time I was afraid. Just allow yourself to move around some. Yes, I forgive myself. Forever doubting what I am made of. And shake out your feet or stomp and them a bit I on the ground. Forgive myself. Get your hips moving in there. For always trying so damn hard and feeling never good enough. Lord knows it has been hard and it's been a crazy, crazy year. And it seeks everything we got But we can rise above the fear We can do whatever we want allowing your body to move and bring in some new beautiful energy for your heart whatever is needed today
have it bent over, bend over a little bit and stretch out that lower part of your back. Remembering to take some good breaths in, offering your heart breaths. Mm, there we go. Oh, finding delight in your own space and in your own heart. I invite you to come on back for a moment. Um, finish up your movement through your hips and relax back in your space. Uh, again, allowing your heart some breaths and just receiving the beauty of your own soul. The beauty of your own light. Mm. You need some water, get a sip of water. Or whatever you're drinking today. <sighs> okay. Um, Aria, how am I on time, please? I don't know if she heard me. Yeah, like five-ish more minutes, and then we can come into close. Five. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was going to offer to, um, because while my channel is open, I was going to offer to answer a couple of questions, but I'm not sure I have enough time for that at this point. Um, so um, let me just, just tune in for one second here. Hmm. So I don't want to open up fully, but I will um, offer that if, if, um, if a different time or there is a question you would like to ask me um, when my chat open it, I can usually answer pretty great questions in spirit, but I just don't think we have enough time to open up where I would be able to, um, to answer or tune in properly. So I don't want to do that fully right now. Um, I would like to tell you that um, this is the work that I do that I offer in the world, really healing um, around, um, I'm considered the trauma expert in many ways, right? And it's really all about the heart. And yes, there are times where that, where that work of going deep in the heart may seem like it's going to be painful, but I find that it's far more painful to hold on to the things that have hurt us or the things that may have bruised us, or even some of those um, intergenerational things that seem to be kind of stuck in patterns and families. And so that's what I do in the world along with offering a um, place for mentorship for those who are trying to tap deeper into spirit, who are trying to learn to perhaps channel or greater mediumship work, or perhaps you're just on the first part of your journey where you don't even know who your guides are or if you have any. That's the work that I offer. Um, so if you would like to be in touch with me, I'd love to be in touch with you and to connect. There are a few ways that you can work with me. Um, probably one of the best ways to work with me is either doing um, an initial three months, excuse me, three sessions with me or coming into a three month longer session if you're wanting long term uh, mentorship or a little bit of more uh, deeper work that I can offer within those three months. Um, Today, I think I have up that um, I'm offering uh, for this group um, a discount on each one of my sessions. So if you'd like to be in touch about that, I would love to hear from you. I believe Aria has all my information. Um, my space is called Temple of the Sacred Rose. And I work with, as Aria told you at the beginning, I work with um, the ancient mother goddesses. But also coming into that space is, is not just the work of, of the ancient mother goddesses and the divine feminine, but also the divine masculine because it is a balance of both that we are needing really to heal our world. 
and the masculine is very much out of balance as the feminine has also then been suppressed. And we are needing the coming together of both, the coming and balancing of both. So coming through my channel, you'll find that Yeshua, who I, who I refer to Jesus as, he'll often show up and other, um, other beings that are also in need for help and healing. So thank you very much for your time today and for being with me. Um, I hope to see you again and maybe I can come back a different time and open up channel for questions. So thank you, Ari. <laughs> Thank you so much, Janine. Really powerful to be guided and connecting with my own five-year-old and 20 year from now self. And a lot of a lot of energy mode, a lot of emotion. So really, really grateful personally and grateful for you to share this with this group. Um, I will uh, definitely be sending um, Janine's info out to everyone. So if you feel uh, guided to connect with her more. I, I really recommend um, what, what she's bringing through. And um, since we do have a couple minutes until we close, maybe just opening up uh, a share or two if anyone wants to share either over the chat or um, you can unmute and share um, just anything that came up for you in that space where, where Janine brought us. knowing that we will um, be making this recording public. So uh, sharing, sharing in that way. <laughs> I'd like to share. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for that. That was a beautiful journey and it was very insightful um, to go back to, to go to the past and also to the future and see myself as, as a multi-dimensional being, not just here, not just right now. And, um, and I just, I loved your energy, Janine. It was beautiful to receive that. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Nicole, thank you. for that. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miles. Shared you'd love the experience. Thank you so much. Anyone else who feels called to share a word or two, what that was like for you, something you learned? I could share something. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Diana. Um, I find that uh, in these this type of experience, I'm always it's like those uh, versions of myself live inside of my body and. I feel re like um, as the connection becomes more reinforced, like how accessible they are to me um, and they become like my child self. Um, and, you know, these versions of myself in the future, I can feel them living all the time within me. And it's such a blessing to be able to be guided to reconnect with them because I forget a lot that they're there so thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Diana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing embodiment. Yay. <laughs> mm. And yes, Sam, we can share the song. <laughs> mm. no, Ari, I can send you the link or however you want me to do it for that song. I actually was the one that uploaded that, I think, but you probably got it from Kate. <laughs> so I love somebody it. sent it to me. So I was gonna say it to you. So good. 
Mm. Yeah, I forgive myself. Oof. Mm. Uh, the ability to really forgive ourselves stuff is amazing. It changes changes on a different level when you are able to really ground in and forgive yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like this moment is is asking for that collective forgiveness of other and self. But for me, it's been coming into forgiving myself that's allowed me to feel um, more access to forgiveness for the, the world and humanity. All the, all the traumas people um, perpetrate on each other. Mm. May it start at home. Mm. Anything else that wants to be shared as we come into close here? Miles is curious what I had in mind when I asked what animals are coming to us this week. <laughs> uh, I've just had a lot of animal encounters, so I was kind of curious what was coming up for everybody else. <laughs> a lot of skunk medicine in my field, as a couple of you know. <laughs> Snakes, awesome. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> mm, all right, well, let's close with um, just a moment once again of returning to our hearts and um going to invite us to do our little hand blessing for Janine. If we all, Janine, you just get to sit there and receive. And if everyone wants to rub our hands together, charge up with that love and that blessing energy. And send it to Janine's heart. Surrounding her in love and light. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here, for showing up, for exploring your curiosity, your love in the world. And um, I'll see you next week. We're kind of in our home stretch, three weeks left. So uh, looking forward to, to what wants to come through for next week. And I will see you then. Lots of love. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Janine. <laughs> Many solstice blessings. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take care. Mm-hmm.